We are the true masters of the earth sphere. True death. Hello, everybody. It's your boy Sleepwalker, the man who walks through dreams, possibly even yours. And we are back with the 25th episode of the Two Deaf Podcast. Today, we have a showdown of Titans and Tritons and um, all other sorts of manner of beasts and bestials. We also have two other guests. Would you like to introduce yourself, guys? Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? This is John, a.k.a. J Poet, and we have made it to our 25th episode. Or what, what would you even call it? Quarter century? In? Yeah, this is a bicentennial. bicentennial? <laughs> isn't that every 200 years? <laughs> or is that every 50 years? Yeah, that's every 50 years. Like... But this quarter centennial? I don't know. Like, you know, it sounds it sounds pretty hoity either way. The 20, I don't know, 25th no. anniversary. It's not an anniversary. It's just like... Well, take it, way, we're... Either way, we've made it. Yes, we're a quarter of Superman's yeah, lifespan. Yeah, there we go. So, gentlemen, before we get into the festivities today of, you know, who would win in fights of fists and power, what have you been playing? Um, well, uh, honestly, I haven't been really playing a whole lot this week. Um, uh, you know, with the uh, exception of the Dungeons and Dragons we were playing. Yeah. As far as video games go, I think it was really only till today that I was like, I've been gaming all day today. But uh, um, I, I actually picked back up uh, Resident Evil Two Remake because I'd beaten the I beaten the game uh, the first playthrough mm-hmm. as Claire, but I haven't played the second playthrough that is Leon. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm almost halfway through. Meandering through it. That's nice. That's nice. All yeah, right, John. Cool. John, what do you got? Oh, well, man, I'm what up, Austin? <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even going to repeat that. <laughs> How did you know it, man? He's, he's too good, bro. What's up, Austin, bro? But uh, man, I've been I've been playing uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mm. uh, and then and then of course uh, this past week uh, we have really dived into our Dungeons and Dragons. Oh man, uh, which is our, the first time I've played it um, is here recently, and I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, we have an online campaign that we're playing. Um, shout out to Jeremiah uh, Dingy uh, as our dungeon master. Uh, we stream that one. We'll be actually be live with that one on Friday night uh, this week. And then we've also started our Dungeons and Flagons. Shout out to the dungeon master, Taylor Getty. Um, what's you call it? He uh, We had our first in-person uh, time playing, and they're definitely two different experiences, but I, I'm, I'm loving it, man. I'm really loving it. I'm already looking forward to Friday. Yeah, I I have to say that I really do enjoy the uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm looking forward to playing any one of the characters I get to play. There, it's uh, it's awesome. It's like you know group imagination. That's what I like about it. Now, what I've been playing is called Skull the Hero Slayer, and twenty dollar indie game on Steam. Have you? Do you all remember a game called Kid Skull? No, exactly. It's an old game, probably back on the Sega Genesis. It's a game where you would go, you would have a head, right? And then you would walk around and you pick up another skull and it would give you like another set of powers and stuff, right? Like it like Mario except skulls instead of hats. Well, this person obviously took a a lot of um like a, a lot of cues from that and made their own game with it. And I have to say it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Just came out recently. It's been in early access. Just came out. Check it out. Twenty dollars. It's a fun time. It's very quick. Very quick play. It's a very quick, you know, roguelike play. So I would suggest it. Definitely have to check it out. Yeah. Also, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. Just, just great. Like I could see the appeal. <laughs> yeah, like, but um, yeah, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys. Uh, you guys picked it up so well. You guys well, like it's, it. it's, it's, it's interesting to me because, you know, you two, you know, besides my wife or whatever, you two know me better than anybody else on this planet. And, you know, it's it's very interesting. Like, if you would have took John 10 years ago or 15 years ago and you would have <laughs> and you would have told him about some of the conversations I've had playing Dungeons and Dragons, you would have never believed it. Yeah. But like I said, I'm, when I, I s- am geeking out to the full extent. What I say to John, he was telling me about his cleric, and I was like, bro, I wish 22 year old John can hear you talk in, in depth about your cleric struggles, bro. <laughs> like, I wonder what he would say. But I may have, I may have punched myself. 
<laughs> what you doing, son? You making us look soft, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, will call it, I will call it growth. Yeah. And maturity. It's true. It's very, it's very true. Very much growth. Very much I'm sorry, maturity. Guys. I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta get a tissue real quick. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the kind. Of, that's, you, that's the kind of thing we like to promote on this show: growth from maturity. Hey, amen to everyone. I don't, I don't even. I'm not even religious, but amen. But yo, so listen, guys, we have a lot to discuss today. So uh, we're gonna try to fit this into our hour. Um, but we have our second installment of versus battle, and uh, we have a doozy for you guys. So um, everybody listening, I know there's what about nine of you guys listening right now. Um, we definitely want you guys to engage with us. So each matchup that we post, I want you. I want to hear your take. Who who do you think is going to win? Why do you think they're going to win? And um, you know, uh, help help participate in the conversation, man. It'll make things a lot more fun. I think it will too. Now, with that being said, let's get to our first matchup, which will be Captain America versus Master Chief. Now. I looked up Master Chief's origin today, and I was shocked and awed by the graphic nature of this man's origin. Because it's like, I, you know, when you see him in Halo and stuff like that, you don't get to, do, you get to know, but apparently they went through his whole origin, and he's basically a kid that was kidnapped and replaced with a clone, just like 72 other kids, put through a program where he was given augmentations and, you know, certain other... Um, What's it called? Um, biological surgeries. You know, uh, very off the scale things government shouldn't be doing to children. And um, he was enhanced to be a super soldier, capable of taking on the alien scourge that was coming upon the human race. Now, the uh, length of his super um, his superhuman, as John will be explaining, but that's basically him in a nutshell as far as his origin and how he got to be the man in the suit. You know, now Captain America, I believe we all know from the Marvel movies, is a soldier of very weak status that gained a super so a super serum that turned him into the Nazi puncher that he is today during <laughs> World War Two. And he got frozen into, you know, an icicle. And from there, when he was thawed out in the uh, later years of, I guess, 2000 now, that I guess we're doing it. He is now punching uh, modern Nazis and vampires and all other sorts of uh, uh, villainry. So I'm going to go ahead and put it off to John. Go ahead and tell us about the power matchup. All right. So, um, you know, I'm interested in this one. Um, they're both very much uh, similar stories. They're both super soldiers or whatever. But they have a, a quite a bit different tale of the tape. Um, so the, this size, is, I, I, I'm assuming, is also including his armor. Um, but Master Chief, his height is seven foot tall. Captain America's mm. height is six foot two. Uh, Master Chief's weight is one thousand pounds. Damn. <laughs> Ca- Captain Captain America's weight is two hundred and twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's including the armor, right? Yeah. I- I'm ass- I'm assuming so. I would assume it has to be. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure a human body cannot weigh that much. But go ahead. <laughs> so. Master Chief has, all, like Sleepy said, he has all kinds of augmentations that he's done to him. And a lot of a lot of Halo players don't even really know this, uh, unless you're kind of really into the lore of Halo. Uh, but he has things like enhanced vision. So, you know, they, they put augmentation directly into his eyeball. So he has unbelievably good eyesight. He can see with much more clarity mm-hmm. than the average human. Uh, and, he can practically see in the dark. Um, and just a quick add-on, when he was... Uh, when he was just a child, they flicked a quarter up, and he could follow it up and down just to see where it landed to know exactly what it would be heads or tails each time. And this is before the augments. So uh, here's and then and then of course he has superhuman strength. So he could lift well over a thousand pounds. Um, uh, he's done incredible uh, feats of strength, and um, and so here it goes. So without his armor, he is roughly two hundred and ninety pounds. Okay. Without without his armor, and um, and so he you know he could he could literally pretty much punch his way out of any problem even though he doesn't because um, his strength is just out of this world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course he has superhuman speed, uh, so uh, he could run at incredible speed. So uh, I think the the way they uh, they clocked it with his armor on, he can get up to sixty miles an hour. 
Uh, so it's it's kind of funny how in the games, especially the early ones, without a sprint button, and he can run sixty miles an hour. It's kind of I know crazy. because you know without that sprint button, it feels more like five millimeters an hour. Like you know, like well, <laughs> 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 well he he also has an extremely durable skeleton. So um, it's due to part of the augmentations that they did, but they reinforced the skeletal skeletal structure. Uh, so his bones are nearly indestructible, and they're less, way less likely to fracture or break, you know, like you or eyes or whatever. So that's why he has the ability to straight up jump out of a spacecraft and land <laughs> on a planet. Um, and you know, he doesn't shatter every bone in his body. So, you know, um, he can literally survive a fall from space. <laughs> so, um, and then the other thing that that I think is something that we have to keep in mind, and the storylines are a little bit um, convoluted with this. But he also has Cortana. Mm -hmm. So Cortana is his own AI um, that when they work together, I mean, he relies on her more than anything else. You know, she can enhance his, his reflexes, tells him what's coming up, what's going on, uh, people's weaknesses and everything else. So he's, you know, he's 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 uh, Cortana is definitely one of his main strengths. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to Captain America, um, you know, while he's not technically superhuman, uh, he's as strong as a human being can be. Um, it says he can lift uh, press up to a maximum of 800 pounds with supreme effort. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's almost damn near close to what Master Chief can lift. You know, mm -hmm. they're not too far off as far as strength goes. And that's and, and I'm assuming that's even with his armor on. Mm -hmm. um, but he has, I mean, Captain America has incredible agility, strength, speed, endurance, and reaction time. I mean, superior to any Olympic athlete who's ever competed. Mm -hmm. Um so um, his uh, super soldier formula um, uh, that he has metabolized has enhanced his bodily functions to peak to human efficiency. So uh, his body eliminates excessive buildup of fatigue, uh, producing poisons in his muscles. Can't get drunk. Um, he, he has phenomenal endurance. Uh, he's mastered martial arts of American style boxing and judo. And he's combined those with his own unique hand to hand style combat. Um, he is... Uh, constantly exercising in aerobics, weightlifting, gymnastics, stimulating combat or whatever. And he stays in peak condition. Uh -oh. um, but but he is subject to all human vulnerabilities. So although his immunity to diseases is extraordinary, you know, you could shoot him and kill him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, and, um, but, he, but he also has his shield, which is uh, nearly indestructible. Mm -hmm. And it could it could be a difference maker in this battle. Yeah, so, and, uh, and he also has an ungodly mastery over physics because he's able to get that shield back no matter how he throws it. <laughs> but don't he have, yeah, I think in some renditions he has like a magnet or some shit on his arm, right? No, that's just the movies. I, like I think they added that because it made more sense than the comic, which is like, no, nah, he's just good. He's just really good. It's <laughs> no, geometry, bro. Geometry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, if that is what is said, Matt, why don't you give us our first opinion on the matchup? Well, I just want to say one thing. That whole thing about Master Chief's eyes, that explains the whole, like, 360 no-scope, you know, sniper rifle. <laughs> 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 now that has an explanation. That's great. Uh, this is a tough one for me, dude. I, I, you know, honestly, after hearing the stats of Master Chief, it's like, damn, dude, he's kind of he's kind of outclassing Captain America here as far as, like, his abilities i just i don't know I, something about it that like so i don't know if you guys know this or not and this is golden age but apparently captain america uh he actually like fist fought satan and won he fought satan in a fist fight and said and he made the devil was like all right you win this time yep. i'll be back and he, he, like, he like, also like, beat he's like, like, devil. like he, he, he beat him he also beat the hulk he in a, he also beat the hulk in a fist fight using pressure points but that is also <laughs> yeah that's 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 comic book movie uh, uh mumbo jumbo yeah. so you know, you know I, think that's, I think that's where he has the advantage here is uh I, don't know, I think he's probably a better fighter, like as far as like fist to fist. Uh, I would imagine in their fight, them starting off, it would just be Cap and his shield, mm. maybe a sidearm, <laughs> and it would be Master Chief with you know his standard array of weapons. So uh, it'd be a tough fight. You know, Master Chief's definitely going to be trying to shoot him. Mm -hmm. Now I don't think he's going to be able to hit him. Um, but it, it, the only way Cap's going to win this is if he if he like disarms Master Chief and takes him fist to fist. Right. Uh, that's the only way I can see him doing it. Uh, or fist and shield to fist to fist, you know. Now, but, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one, man. Um, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing, at least what I'm thinking. Like, Master Chief has the advantage in almost every way conceivable, but that has never stopped Cap before. Now, we're getting into the realm of plot armor, which is, you know, it's a sticky realm because Cap is taking people much better than him and uh, and much more, you know, armored down than him before because he has more, like, wealth of uh, wealth more experience than Master Chief. But that's because he's, you know, like, been alive for, like, over, like, a couple of hundred years only because of the, well, no, like, Maybe like over a hundred years because of the soldier serum. So he's been a soldier back in the day, and you know, Ford, and he's fought things like vampires, cyborgs, aliens, stuff like that. And so is Master Chief. But I just feel like Captain America has the experience advantage. But I don't think the experience advantage is going to be enough to surmount Master Chief's just superior physicality. Well, Matt, I don't think you ever actually chose one. So do you want to go ahead and make a? That's dude. I, I don't know, man. I, 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 it's my gut feeling is just gonna. I have to go with Cap, bro. <laughs> like, I just think, like, I agree with what Sleepy just said. I think he would, he would find a way to pull it out. He's taking on, you know, I mean, shit like, like, even if you look like uh, the original, like Infinity War, mm-hmm. when like, Thanos like beat everybody, and but Cap was still standing. He's like, last. Like, he was so he standing was, up. Like, he was last with him, but that gets into plot armor territory. And that's one thing you yeah, have to but, take. I mean, whatever, whatever you call it, it's still, you know, it's still canon. So it happened. Like, yeah, that's, that's what you have to go with. The okay. type of stuff he's done. Like, you said he took on the, the Hulk. Like, that is true. Like, did, that's, uh, that shit did happen. So what do you think, John? I don't John? think Master Chief's going to fight the Hulk. What do you so. think, John? Well, I tell you, I love Captain America. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, we always joke uh, because he reminds me similarly of Batman to where he's not technically superhuman. He's not technically any of this, but yet he leads superhumans. Mm. You know, it's the same thing with Batman. He's not a superhuman, but yet he runs the Justice League. You know what I mean? Pretty much. Um, so there, there's something to say about that. There's some intangibles um, that Master Chief, or I mean, that uh, Captain America definitely has. Um, but given that, it seems to me that Master Chief is a bigger, stronger, and gives less of a fuck, same version of Captain America. Right. He's a super soldier. He's bigger. He's stronger. He has armor. And he has a larger array of weapons. I know some of the World War II Captain America storylines, he has some firearms and stuff. But mm. the New Age ones, he very rarely does he use firearms, you know? Sure. Um, Captain America, I mean, uh, not sorry, Master Chief, he has pla- mm. Hello? Oh, snap. Hello? I mean, he has all kinds of different weapons um, other than just the shield. And I, I'd be interested to see what an energy sword would do to, to Captain America's shield. Um, right off, dude. I think I, I do agree that Cap has beaten more insurmountable opponents than Master Chief is, mm. even. Mm-hmm. But, but I just don't see, I don't see Master Chief. Um, losing to Captain America. I just don't see it. He's too big. He's too strong. He's too durable. Uh, I mean, literally, he can jump out of a spaceship and land on Earth. Hold uh, on. I, 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 I see what he's saying. I, we're still good, though. There was a second where it said video um, okay. broadcast uh, interrupted, but it's, it should be good now. Yeah, it's good now. Um, but, um, you know, Master Chief, to me, is closer to a Doom Slayer level than Captain America is. I just think he's he's more ruthless. He don't care to kill you. You know, Captain America is going to try not to kill you. Um, and you know, I, I think in those in those kind of battles, he has more weapons. He's bigger. He's stronger, and he will kill you. So I think um, I think given those those aspects, I'm definitely going to go with Master Chief. Hmm. Like you know, and uh, well, everything we said, I think I'm also going to go with Master Chief in this one. Well, well, right. yeah, I got some beats. All right. First winner. Uh, we got our first winner, which is Master Chief over Captain America. A sad one, indeed. Now, for our next one, which is going to be, and I'm rolling the dice behind the screen. And there's no dice. I'm just, you know, <laughs> just making it up. And. Is it a 
What? Is it a D20? Yeah, exactly. And I'm rolling that one every time, baby. Now, <laughs> that's the nerd, nerdiest jokes we've ever done. Anyways, uh, the next one is going to be uh, something recent, something coming out here soon, and that's going to be Kong versus Godzilla. Now, Go <laughs> King Kong is the uh, ruler of Skull Island, living there as amongst the uh, large monsters of the island. His parents killed in an invasion of giant lizard things that they failed to fight off, but Kong made it out, giving birth during the battle, and and went on to rule Skull Island with an iron fist as the king of monsters there. But then we have Godzilla, the actual king of monsters. No, I was playing. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to simp for Godzilla. Not yet. Anyways, but... um. We have Godzilla, basically a lizard who was changed by nuclear rea nuclear energy to make him a giant nuclear reactor lizard who can basically plow through most of, I don't know, everything. Hey, are you guys still there? Yeah, we're still there. Yeah. All right, I thought you may have dropped out. Basically, most of everything. He's fought many monsters like Mothra, Mecha Godzilla, and even... Um, King Kong, but that was more of a movie ending, so we'll, you know, have to see where it goes from here. John, why don't you give us a uh, background of powers? All right, so this one is difficult to determine. Uh, it is very relevant because they had the movie coming out here soon and everything else. That's kind of the, the reason that we picked it. Um, so also saying cinematic-wise, Kong, because they don't show the size difference, white paper Godzilla. Uh, you know, and you can agree. I, I can agree with that kind of. But, I, you know, during the research, the size difference definitely matters. Um, so tale of the tape, King Kong's height, it ranges based on the movies. So the original King Kong was only 24 foot tall. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the newest movie has him at 390 feet tall. Mm. So, I mean, you, you could just imagine, I don't know what uh, story arc they're going to try to use in the new movie of why Kong is so massive now. Mm -hmm. uh, but in all of the other Kong movies, he's climbing the entire, entire um, Empire State Building. Yeah. That is the size of Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla. You know. Godzilla's the size of the, of the, of the thing. So, but it, based on the movies, um, it's anywhere from 24 foot to 390 foot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the other end, Godzilla, it also ranges based on the movie, and he is anywhere from 164 feet to 984 feet. Mm. So the newest movie has him at 400 feet. So the, the, if we're going to do it based on the new movie, King Kong is 390 feet, Godzilla's 400 foot. Okay, so, um, you know, so a little but, bit but more part, even. Yeah, it's more even in the new movie, but it, and it's also interesting. Uh, the weight for King Kong is twenty thousand metric tons, mm -hmm. and the weight for Godzilla is one hundred and sixty-four thousand metric tons. Mm. So that is a substantial difference in weight. So I, I'm not what? sure how that's possible, but that, 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 <laughs> is what, that is what that is what they give us here. So we'll start off with Godzilla. Um, you know, obviously he had he's a he's a very you know popular character. He's been around for. Hey, before you get started, I want to before you get started, I want to comment on what Wayne Jones said. Uh, that's what I was going to say myself because if you watch the Skull Island, the the first Skull Island movie, uh, it's like he's still young. It's like he's like an adolescent, mm -hmm. and they at the end of the movie they say they say it in the movie, and this is like in the seventies or or I think it's during like Vietnam or something like that, mm -hmm. and they even say like. They're like, hey, you know, uh, he's only going to get bigger. Like, he's going to get way right. bigger. And then you cut to, like, 2020 or 2021, and he's, you know, all that time he's been growing. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's so much bigger than he was in, in Kong Island. Well, that that's why he's able that to be as big as... That would definitely explain it for sure. Yeah. So, so uh, as far as abilities go, King uh, Godzilla has atomic breath, nuclear beam, and radioactive ray, and atomic ray. So Godzilla's signature weapon is a distinctive atomic breath. Um, his dorsal spines glow, uh, and then he lets loose with this concentrated blast of radiation from his mouth. Um, it's often mistaken and confuses fire breathing because he kind of looks like a dragon or whatever, but it's not. Hmm. Uh, the color of the atomic breath corresponds with the color of his dorsal plates or whatever. So he can he's able to adjust the intensity of that ray. Um, 
It has explosive and concussive properties. Um, he's fought multiple different enemies um, throughout all of his movies. He has uh, nuclear pulse, magnetic aura, and other powers. So in addition to his atomic breath, he also can emit atomic energy in all directions from every inch of his body in a short-range pulse. Um, he's used that ability in multiple series, um, and he's used it to kill Orga. Um, he's injury-resistant, and he has a healing factor. So, you know, he's, he's, he has an uncanny ability to resist injury, and uh, he's, he's not even the pressure and cold of deep-sea trenches can kill him. Oh, yeah. Um, and he has a regenerative ability. Um, he's displayed various levels of physical strength. Uh, he's been depicted as lifting and throwing monsters in excess of his own weight. Mm. Um, so, that, you know, that's ridiculous. Uh, he's even been shown to use various martial arts techniques <laughs> in, a comical, <laughs> in a comical fashion. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I've, tail, I've seen those movies. His, his tail is also used as a formidable weapon. And uh, he also, his bodily is constantly emitting radiation, similar to like nuclear fission. So, um, you know, it's unclear the exact nature of this radiation, but it's it's been shown to contaminate water sources and raise ocean temperatures and, and uh, uh, even create mutations in his, his uh, opponents. Mm. Um, he's also able, he's also able to be amphibious. So he can be on land, he can be in water, he can do all this kind of stuff. Um, he also has high intelligence. Uh, it's kind of changed throughout the character's history, um, but he's depicted as a monster with some sort of intelligence. Um, so, you know, he, he's called the king of monsters for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, conversely, if we go to King Kong, um, they've actually fought before. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very interesting to me. King Kong is the only person that Godzilla has not been able to beat. Uh, in fact, Godzilla won the very first battle they had, and there was such outcry from the Godzilla you mean King Kong that won. they had. Yeah, I'm sorry, King Kong won their first battle, and there was so much, um, so much backlash. They had to go back and say it was a draw uh, yeah. because King Kong technically won the first one. Um, but given that he has he, he has atomic resistance, atomic breath resistance. Uh, so he, he appears to particularly be resistant to his, his atomic breath. Mm. So he, um, you know, it, it's like convenient. He's been, he's been hit by it a few times throughout King Kong versus Godzilla. And he suffers little more than having some singed fur. Mm. So, uh, so he hasn't really, you know, it's not like his atomic breath is really hurting Godzilla. I mean, uh, hurting King Kong. Mm -hmm. Um, he's also demonstrated durability, um, and is able to continue fighting even against airplanes and, um, and destroy them after he's been riddled with bullets. Mm -hmm. um, he, the first incarnation of King Kong vs. Godzilla, uh, he also can't be harmed by electrical currents. Uh, so instead it feeds, he feeds on their power, and it revitalizes or awakens them from a state of unconsciousness. So he can use those electrical currents, uh, whether they're man-made or natural or whatever, to allow him to release surges of electricity from his hand. Um, so that actually happened in the very first fight that they had. Oh, snap. Um King Kong also has remarkable intelligence. Um, he makes use of environmental objects like trees and rocks when he's fighting, mm -hmm. and even when he's overwhelmed or, or against more powerful or more you know numerous opponents, he can think on his feet and find a way to win. Does he, um, does he use American style boxing? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if he has uh, you know martial arts ability. <laughs> uh, the second incarnation of uh, of the Toho Kong, um, he had radioactive immunity, so he was. Uh, he was immune to the radioactive element X or whatever. And he was the first monster to ever defeat Godzilla. Um, and the first monster not to be killed by Godzilla. Mm. So, you know, and, and obviously those were ancient movies. Um, but I think this fight all comes down to their sizes. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that if you have King Kong versus Godzilla and it's they're the same size, a 400-foot gorilla is probably the most terrifying thing I could think of as far as brutality and force. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think Matthew should go first. That's, that's the way it should go. Mm. Um, guys, I'm sorry. I just want to make this short. I, I, I don't care what your stats say. But there's, Godzilla would wreck King Kong's <laughs> world. Like, no, dude, no, that, that's so stupid. I don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait to see the movie. It's gonna be great. Godzilla would eat him for breakfast, bro. Oh, like, bro. dude, 
I didn't know that. See, see that, that that's kind of like I, I can't ignore your stats. I'm joking, but like I had no idea he's supposed to be resistant to laser breath. Fucking like I, I don't know, man. I'm. It really, it really. God, God, Godzilla, Godzilla uh, got sent to hell. I don't know if you, you should look this up, man. <laughs> Godzilla went to hell and and took he. He is the Lord of Hell now. He took over Hell, <laughs> destroyed all the demons in Hell, and is just like a giant skeletal Godzilla who like runs Hell now. Like it's a really good comic book. You should read it. So explain no to me what would happen, man. Would it change? Your, would it change the outcome if it was Godzilla who killed Harambe? Would King Kong <laughs> then? Well, that would definitely get. That would definitely give King Kong a little p- extra push you need. But I'm, I'm sorry, bro. He would he would bite King Kong's head off. <laughs> no, nah, man, I no, I, I'm going with Godzilla 100. All right. Always. Well, like, interesting side note: Godzilla has he can, the, he can regenerate. Like, what what's King Kong going to no. do? Stab him? You hit him something? Well, he's just going to regenerate. Interesting. And slowly gain cancer while he's fighting. <laughs> all right. Godzilla has the inability to make a well produced video game, so you know he does. You know that's his one of his weaknesses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, pretty much, you know, it's, it's one. But no, I so had what, to say, what I'd, say you sleep. I'd have to say that um, uh, Godzilla would probably destroy King Kong. Like, because the thing is, like, even without, let's say, he has the immunity to his uh, his nuclear breath and his nuclear field, he's also like just straight up just beat the shit out of people. Like, <laughs> just beat the shit out of monsters with with apparently martial arts, something that. <laughs> Something that like King Kong wouldn't even know the concept of, like. And the thing is, like, I know King Kong. You know, he fought him one time back in the day, but like Godzilla has made an entire thing out of beating monsters' asses. Like, you know, this is like that's that's his thing. Like, he beats other monsters, monsters that have abilities more than punch. And I, I just don't think that uh, God, uh, King Kong. He's got it to step in the ring. No, I think he's just going to get wrecked, man. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I really, really want to ride with my man Kong. I really do. Um, and with them being the same size, I think it definitely evens it up some. If you go with classic Godzilla versus classic King Kong, Godzilla's going to step on him. Uh, mm. But with them being the same size, I think it's going to be a damn good fight, and I halfway suspect that Kong's going to win, or they're going to end up teaming up and fighting a bigger threat in the new movie. Um, is what I would suspect. Um, but given that, uh, King Kong's nothing but a gorilla. Mm. Godzilla has spikes and atomic breath and radiation, and you know mm. whatever. It's at, at the worst case. Godzilla can grab him and take him out into the ocean and drown him. Yeah, he's got actual so, technique too. You know, there's so. there's so many more ways for Godzilla to win than there is for King Kong. But the only way King Kong can win is if he gets Godzilla hurt and then he you know grabs him and starts ripping his head off and you know grabs his bottom jaw and his upper jaw and rips him apart or whatever. That's I very, think it'd be something like like what Austin said. Uh, you'd have to hurt him enough to cause him to have to go hibernate. Mm. I don't even think he could kill him. He would just damage him enough to where he's like, all right, I'm, I'm leaving this fight. He went. Like, well, I, I am. I am just going to have to. It's going to be our first unanimous one. I'm definitely going to have to ride with Godzilla on this. I just think he has so many more weapons and so many more ways to win. Uh, and you don't have you don't have to change his storyline to make it a more even fight. You know, you don't have to make King Kong go from 24 foot to 390 foot just to make it an even fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to like yeah. you have to literally change everything to yeah, make it an actual fight. Shots. You know, he but, make it, but anyways, I make it a fight at all, and it still would be lopsided in my opinion. But anyway, so I really, I really want to ride with Kong, but I can't. But anyways, we got to get some more. So get this motherfucking grill out of here. Get this punk ass grill out of here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Harambe wouldn't have lost. No, I was playing. <laughs> uh, like anyways, uh, uh, lost the, the next, gun, man, the man. next match we have is a three way match, and it's not a death battle. It's a heist, a heist off. In fact, it is between Indiana Jones, Lord Cloth. And Nathan Drake. Now, there's three people here, so I'm going to make this quick. 
basically Indiana Jones is an archaeologist slash, uh, you know, uh, adventurer slash thief, because that's kind of what you are, that goes out and finds artifacts and gives them to museums as if that's going to do anything for them. And so he basically goes out and finds artifacts that no one's ever seen before. Or, or you know, people didn't think exists like the Holy Grail, like uh, the Ark of the Covenant, stuff like that. So that's Indiana Jones. Laura Croft is a rich girl is a rich girl whose um I believe parents died on an expedition and uh she had to basically survive on her own and uh she came pretty much of her own and uh, gained more abilities and uh, found a mentor and uh, became an adventurer of her own uh, of her own ilk now Nathan Drake is a person that was also born to a wealthy family of two archaeologists but one of them died of suicide because she didn't want to, you know, succumb to his disease, and their father sucked. So she, so he gave him away to an orphanage. So him and his brother grew up as orphans, looking for the treasure of Sir Francis Drake, and that's why they took their name uh, Drake, because uh, their original name was Morgan, but they uh, took the name Drake in uh, effort to, of their mom's beliefs of looking for the treasure of Sir Francis Drake, and they found that shit. Just like everybody else, hey, Indiana Jones also followed the Ark of the Covenant, and so I like that's probably the greatest find ever. Anyway, mm-hmm. these three are two thieves of well-known renown, and also Indy fought Nazis. Thank you, Austin. He fought the Nazis straight up. So these are your three master thieves. John, go ahead and give us a list of human abilities. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, uh, like you said, they're not fighting to the death. Uh, this this situation is they all are after the same artifact. Who's going to walk away with it? Um, we'll start with Nathan Drake. Uh, man, I don't know if anybody listening has ever played any of these games. But dude has incredible high luck and adaptability and improvisation. Mm. Uh, that's kind of like his superpower. He has so much luck and so much improv, improv that this is what he does the whole time. He very rarely ever has a plan. Um, uh, he's extremely durable and athletic. He can jump ridiculous distances. I was watching this. Um, I was watching this um, this video about him, and uh, he was standing still and jumped more than nineteen feet, <laughs> which is like what? the long the long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a but, LeBron uh, shit. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But he's five foot eleven. Uh, he's been on his own since the age of fifteen, and is largely self taught. Um, he has encyclopedic style knowledge of history. Uh, he's a master of the half cut shirt. Um, for whatever reason, bridges like to collapse beneath him, mm. um, and he, he runs. Found, <laughs> he has he has found five lost civilizations. He survived a train wreck with a bullet wound, survived many 25-plus footfalls, defeated the whole band of pirates. Fell out of a, stra- a plane. And, right. He was survived, He survived stranded in the desert for two days, and he can move a 20-ton boulder, and he hates clowns. Um, <laughs> but, what? Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> hates but clowns, I, I always bro. Remember, I always remember the Uncharted game that we played, and like Sleepy said, the plane was literally falling, like crashing, and dude was jumping off the cargo like <laughs> Dragon Ball Z stats, like, like he's Cloud or something, uh, jumping off these buildings or whatever. But, he, but he's always in a pickle. He very rarely ever has a plan in what he's going into. Uh, Indiana Jones... Um, you know, he's the OG of the, of the bunch. It's hard. We haven't really set the parameters. Is this like old Indiana Jones or like back in his prime? I'm going to assume it's in his prime. Yeah, it's old. in his prime. Yeah. It is old. That's just, you know, that's whack. Um, but he knows over 20 plus languages. He has a PhD. He's formally studied ancient cultures. This isn't all like self-taught stuff. He literally has a PhD in ancient cultures. And if we're just being real, he has the most experience and he's stolen the most artifacts and the most difficult and important artifacts of all three of these guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura Croft, uh, she's fluent in several languages. She's in peak physical and mental condition, and she possesses amazing acrobatic and parkour skills, which allow her to survive and escape from otherwise impossible situations. Uh, she's a master marksman in many types of weapons, 
and she's literally survived uh, an island full of mercenaries and fought her way off the island. Um, she survived multiple plane crashes. Uh, she's infiltrated and, and escaped from Area 51. She's pushed. She's pushed blocks from the Great Pyramid. Area 51. What the fuck? Yeah. Yep. She survived a 200 foot, 250 foot dive into water. She's twice battled Egyptian god Set <laughs> and defeated the. And she's defeated the god queen of Atlantis. And she has killed a T Rex, Velociraptors, and a dragon on multiple occasions. Wow. So. This one's kind of difficult, man. Um, you know, if they were fighting, if this was a fight to the death, huh. my money's 100% on Laura Croft. Yeah. Um, but as far as getting in and getting out and stealing this artifact, um, I don't know. Oh, but, so, so I've explained the tale of the tape. I'm going to let Matt start off. You know, this is a really interesting one, honestly. I, you know, like, I agree with you. This is combat. Like, yeah, uh, Laura Croft's going to take it. Um, but when it comes to this scenario, dude, like, I mean, it's just hard to say, like, if there was a set, like, scenario for this, like, where they were at, where they were located, are there other enemies trying to find it, too, or is it just, just them three in a, in a dungeon somewhere, or a, a, a tomb, or whatever? Like, like this, I have a feeling like, it, it would be, what's that? Like, let's say all three of them in some forbidden tomb that has an artifact in it with any unknown, uh, any known number of traps and um, pitfalls. Maybe a supernatural element as well. It would be one of those situations where the the treasure would, like, trade hands multiple times. And I I don't know, man. I have a feeling at the end of the day, it would be... I think it would probably end up being Indiana Jones who walks away with the treasure. How many times does Nathan Drake, like... Matt, Nathan, let me, Nathan, let me interrupt real quick, bro. Okay. Austin, Austin just said, "Shit, it needs to be a four-way." Where's Nicholas Cage? Where's he at? He stole the Declaration of Independence. Oh shit! <laughs> that hey, oh, like man. after seeing what's happening at the White House, that doesn't even seem hard anymore. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but uh, anyways, what I'm saying is, like, I think it would end up being like it would be Indy at the end. Like, like, like I'm pretty sure. If I've, I've played most of the. The, the Drake collection. And I want to say, like, he always ends up finding what he's trying to find, but he never go he never like gets it. Like he always ends up having to like it gets destroyed or something. And he's and he might get like a little treasure just to start off his next expedition. But like he's the only person that knows it's real. No one else like everybody who knows about it it ends up getting killed or the the place gets destroyed or lost again. Like, you know what I mean? Laura yeah. actually successfully finds her shit, but Indy has the most the, the biggest count. So mm. I have a feeling it would be it would be probably mostly Indiana Jones and Laura Croft with possession of this, and it would be like Nathan running up and doing some sly shit, it's taking it, trying to run away, falling into a trap, dropping it, somebody else picks it back up. But I think at the very end of the day, it's going to be Indiana Jones who's going to be driving off on his motorcycle, smiling mm. after he like did like a, a exchange, like you know, so one of the other ones thinks they have it, but it well, ends up being a fake. But and you know like yeah. that's that's how I can see it going. Like, that's, that's, but but Indy would end up saving them. Like Indy, Indy would save their lives, and then he would leave, and he would be like the winner at the same at the end. Like the way I see it, it's gonna be like let's say there's a temple, you know, and they have to get through it. There's a number of traps and maybe a supernatural element. It's gonna be who gets through this faster, these traps faster. Even though, like you say, it'll probably switch hands. Like, if I were to think about it, I don't know. Like, because Nathan Drake, if you were to go as he plays the game, he's just figuring it out as he can goes. But he has a lot of prior knowledge. So does Indy. And he's figuring it out as he goes, too. He gets caught in death traps and stuff and gets out all the time. And lo so does Laura. But um, I don't know, man. Indy found the Ark of the Covenant. I don't like That's ridiculous. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she found the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, man. I didn't yeah, even play that. She's done a lot of stuff. And yeah. yeah look more into these games. She, she, she's done some crazy. Well, like, the, I, like, I was going to say, like, the first, the first, the, what was it? The one that came out, uh, Tomb, Tomb Raider, the, the one, the origin story, like, uh, when, they, when they rebooted it. He said, what Wayne, was it called? Uh, Wayne City. The Square Enix. Um, but, anyways, when, uh, like, Tomb Raider Rising or oh, something like that. Guys. Hold up, guys. Don't talk at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyways, like if you play the game, she is no skills. 
she's like she has no no like nothing and she you play that game and you what she like learns skills as she survives and at the end of the game she fights like a samurai god like like a japanese samurai like demon lord or some shit and kills him and gets away with the artifact that's with true. like two days of training, like but, uh, pretty impressive. When he said Indiana Jones, was it Wayne said Indiana Jones? He solved puzzles by God. He saw <laughs> he solved God's puzzles, bro. I don't know. <laughs> like I do that. I do that every day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like um, but I have to say, like at the end of the day, I also want to go with Indy. Maybe it's because I'm an old school fan, but I feel like he's gonna get away. He's he's gonna have the most experience to get away with it at the end of the day. So I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to simplify it to me. I feel like this comes down to luck versus skill versus experience. And, you know, that's kind of what it is to me. Um, I, I think that when it comes to being able to interpret languages, when it comes down to being able to recognize traps, um, and all those kind of things, I believe that Indiana Jones definitely has the has the advantage there because of his experience and his vast knowledge. <clears throat> Nathan Drake, um, he just has luck on his side, and there's something that can be said about that. Um, he's he's kind of a an idiot. He does, never has a plan. He just runs into it blindly or whatever. Um, but he always seems to win somehow. Mm. Um, and then you have Laura Croft, who's just an overall badass, and she, you know, she can do acrobatics and you know gymnastic kind of things. That it's like a superhuman. Do. Yeah, these other two guys can't do. Um, <sighs> but I will say that to me, uh, it comes down between Laura Croft and Indiana Jones. Um, and as badass as all of these people are, uh, Laura Croft has killed a T Rex multiple times. Bro. Like I, I just. <laughs> I, I just I really I can't vote against that. So I, I'm just I, I want to go with Indiana Jones because I'm also an old school fan, and and he may end up walking away with the artifact. Who knows? I can see it just like Matt said, where he kind of fools them and saves them at the same time. They think they have the artifact, but the whole time he does. Um, man, why did it have to be snakes? Yeah, it's so hard. For me, man. I, I think I think uh, I think I'm biased, but I think I'm going to go with Indiana Jones at the end of the day. I think Laura Croft is going to do most of the work. Mm-hmm. And Indiana Jones is going to be the one that walks away with it. And Nathan Drake's probably going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting side note. There was one time video of Harrison Ford playing um, Uncharted. And um, I just thought that was great because he was at the part where he was on the plane. And I wanted him to say, get off my plane. You know, just like, you know, <laughs> it's an old school reference. But um, right, right. And, and, anyways, that that, one, baby. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Any hey, I would have to say I would have to say so Austin says if Indy had technology it'd be no tech no competition. Um I don't think he has any more technology than the other two guys. Maybe more updated guns or something, but who um, Indy? Indy Indy has less technology than the rest of them, I guess. Oh but, yeah, okay, let's I'll say, say yeah. I'll tell you one of the funniest he's back in the thirties. Me and Matt was talking about this the other day. One of the funniest moments ever is in the Indiana Jones movie where he has like this sultan, he's like Swinging the sword around, looking all badass, and Indiana Jones is looking at him like, "What the hell?" Pulls his gun out and just shoots him. You know? yeah, exactly, <laughs> because you know this is the modern era, bro. You can keep that shit home. I mean, you can LARP somewhere else. Anyway, okay, let's we, not forget. Let's not forget. I, oh, I, I'm definitely Indy. What? I'm going Indy too. Let's say, yeah, yeah. Indy. Let's not forget. Uh, he 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 survived a nuclear explosion. <laughs> in, in, a refri- in a refrigerator, in a lead, no less. In a lead line oh man, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> that is true. Like I don't think anybody oh, else, luck. like Nathan <laughs> the Drake, fakest, the fakest, the fakest moment in cinema history. Like Nathan Drake may have got out of there because the gods opened up and then just you know shitted out his path to victory. He did that because he had diarrhea. Well, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's what he did, Wayne. You know, like oh, yeah. you can't really control when that happens. Anyways, let's get it because we got like ten minutes, and we're still gonna probably we're gonna finish these, but we're gonna be over. Anyways, the next battle: Simon Belmont versus Blade, the Battle of the Vampire Slayers. Simon Belmont, another the third member of the illustrious Belmont family of Vampire Slayers. 
He was the one to actually put him down and then get cursed afterwards putting Dracula down and then put Dracula down again. Of course, it wasn't for good because Dracula's never down for good. But he would go and fight evil for 50 more years before passing on the Belmont's fabled whip. And, uh, you know, basically that's his lineage of fighting evil and defeating, you know, vampires, which is a lot more in depth, but John will get into that. Now, Blade, a tragic story of being born in a brothel and having his mother basically eaten while she was given birth. So since he's connected to her by her umbilical cord, that put into him some of the vampire juice but not all the vampire juice just half the vampire juice making him the day walker a force against vampire religion you know and he um basically trained with a person called whistler i think it's an he had another actual name but we'll just call him whistler who also turned into a vampire and he had to kill and um basically after that he became full-on blade so what do you got for me john all right, so tail of the tape. Simon Belmont. Height is six foot one. Blade height is six foot two, which actually surprised me. Uh, Simon Belmont, his weight is 192 pounds. Blade's weight is 180 pounds. Mm. So uh, Belmont, he can brandish the vampire killer. And it allows him to swing it or cause the vampire to go limp. He can also hold out the vampire killer to destroy incoming projectiles, which include projectiles as powerful as death's sickle. Mm. He has a fireball. So in Castlevania, Harmony of Despair, uh, he could use a vampire killer to throw a fireball from his whip. Um, he has air ability. So he can use his whip to pull a vertical or horizontal lashes of the whip. Um he also can um, whip enemies towards himself, like pull them towards him, like, you know, scorpion style. Um, he has all kinds of different abilities with this whip. Um, so he can um, um, he can toss it, he can twist it, he can whip it. He can do all kinds of different things. Um, he can charge at his enemies and hit them with onward uh, to connect with hyper. He charges his whip. Uh, and the golden cross on his back glows brightly. He rushes at his victim while they fail to block, unable to comprehend his speed and power. Um, it says he uh, he can whip his victim five times vertically and charges his whip another time with more power before hitting his victim another 93 times, creating the illusion of a sphere. Uh, he ends it with the final two powerful hits, totaling the combo to 99 hits. He lands on the ground and explains to the victim the power of a Belmont. So, um, more importantly than all of this, in Castlevania, Count Dracula is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And that's, that's who Belmont fights on a regular basis. So, conversely, Blade has superhuman strength He's supernaturally strong and is capable of lifting about one ton. Ten tons. What'd you say? Ten tons. Uh, from what I read, it was one ton. Oh. If it's ten, if it's ten tons, this is Blade I'm talking about here. Yeah, no, ten, ten, ten tons. Ten, ten tons is 20,000 pounds. Yup. Okay, well, he has superhuman speed. He's capable of running and moving at speeds greater than even the finest human athlete. He has a human-vampire hybrid. So he was born half-human, half-vampire. Uh, the enzymes in Blade's blood made him immune to normal vampire bites, uniquely attuned to sensing the supernatural and resistant to aging. Uh, since being bitten by Morbius, Blade has gained many of the traditional powers of the vampire without developing their weaknesses. He has superhuman strength, senses, and stamina, plus accelerated healing factors. He has acute senses... Um, he, he has heightened levels of sight and hearing compatible to true vampires. He's able to see objects clearly, uh, perfect clarity at much greater distances than a human. Um, he has uh, superhuman agility and balance. And um, he has the regenerative um, healing factor. Mm. So he's also a master of martial arts. He's proficient to pra at practically every form of weaponry known to man. 
Mm. Um, he's also, uh, his main form of combat is a mixture of Kung Fu, Capoeira, Sho, uh, Shotokan Karate, Wing Chun, Eskrima, Sailot, Shaolin Kung Fu, Kenjutsu, and Tim and Tum Pai. He's an expert marksman. He can throw almost any projectile weapon at great aim. He's an expert swordsman and has proficiency at practically every form of weaponry known to man. He's uh, he's fluent in English, German, Romanian, and Japanese. And he's even an expert at uh, at driving vehicles, driving cars, motorcycles, and various other vehicles. Mm-hmm. This one's a tough one, guys. Yeah. Matt, what's, what's, what say you, bro? What say you? Yeah, you know, this is a really tough one. Um, and I'm not really sure who I should pick on this one. Um, I Like, my, my heart wants to go with Simon Belmont. Just because of the level of enemies he's like, fate, like Dracula, yeah, like, like, like Dracula is like real. He ain't just like, you know, stick a, a stake in his chest, Dracula. Like, he's like a powerful god wizard. <laughs> like, and Simon Belmont's been able to take him down twice. So, um, I don't know, man. It's a rough one. It's just, I'm trying to imagine the fight, and it'd be like, I think if it gets hand to hand, if like Blade gets in, he's definitely more superior hand to hand fighter, like for sure. Um, but I mean, like, like I don't Blade likes to use guns and different kinds of things. I don't think it would really work on like Belmont. If he has that whip, you could just you know stop any uh, projectiles coming at him. Mm. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's a rough one, dude. I, and I'm pretty sure, like, if I know Blade well enough, I don't know if the vampire, if the vampire slayer will actually work on him because he only have like, doesn't he have like all the strengths of the vampire but none of their weaknesses? But, but none of their weaknesses. Except for yeah, like, so would... except for like an aversion to sunlight. It's like it doesn't hurt him; it just hurts his eyes. Yeah, he has well, to wear those in shades. The, off in them. the movies, in the movies, and I don't know if this is true for the comics, but in the movies. He has to give himself injections to to control his bloodlust. Yeah, he does give himself injections to control his bloodlust, but it's not exactly like it's a self imposed thing. Because if he were to drink blood, he would become even stronger. Mm. You know, so like oh, yeah. it's a self imposed thing. He doesn't actually have to do that. But if I'm gonna go with like like this is a hard one because Simon Belmont has beaten death itself. Like, he, like he's <laughs> yeah. beaten death itself, and that's crazy. That's like something like, how do you even do that? He's just beaten such prolific things, man, and only being a human with the with amazing power. And but the thing is, like, like I he only fights monsters, really. You know, fighting another human. I guess vampires are other humans, but fighting something there where the uh, abilities that kill vampires don't work. How well would that work against Blade? Because I'm pretty sure bullets would still work against Simon Belmont, you know? And uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to block all that with Justice Whip. He may be amazing, but he's not exact. Well, I don't know. He beat Death. He, so. blocked, he, he, blocked, De- he blocked Death's uh, like, sickle with the thing. Pretty sure he just has to spin it around real fast. And if anybody's shooting at him, it just. No. He just I, creates a shield. And I, nothing I, can hit him. I had to think, you know, he's probably never fought like 20th century or 21st century um, weapons, but you know, like at the at the same time, he's so amazing. He's defeated things that shouldn't actually be defeated, which Blade could not be Death. You know, because Death is much more powerful in Marvel. Even though Blade has beaten Dracula, he's not as powerful as the Dracula in Castlevania. So, like, I don't know, man. That that's a hard one, dude. Like. So I'll say this. I, neither one of you guys have really picked yet, but I'm going to yeah. go ahead and say my piece. This is hard for me because uh, I'm a Blade fan. I don't know a whole lot about Castlevania. I've played one game of Castlevania. Um, and, you know, most of this is just based on research I've done. I love Blade. Um, but almost all of Blade's weaponry, and he has a lot of cool gadgets and a lot of cool weapons, um, but almost all of them, virtually all of them are designed to kill vampires so it's going to not really be effective at all against Noma. uh the same can kind of be said about you went out for a second john hold on
Hold on. Can you all hear me? John? I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. John went out for a second. Go ahead and talk again. Hello? Did he? I mean, I'm here. Okay. You're here. Well, he- until he comes back, I, I guess I, I'll go ahead and just say uh, um, if I had to pick, thinking about it, I'd have to say uh, I'm going to go with Simon on this one. Dude. <laughs> like, he's just too real. Like, yeah. I, he- even what John was saying before he cut <clears throat> out, like, um, you know, you know, blaze weapons are designed for vampires, but they're still they'll still easily kill a human. You know, yeah, like there's just bullets. There's it's still a sword. You know, the different weapons he uses, they're just you know they're like lined with silver and garlic and shit. That's how he's able true. To, but know, check it. Vampires. But check it though. Like, if blaze weapons are made for vampires, his weapons are made for vampires. They get in a fist fight. I think blade wins that. Like, I think so. That's yeah. the only. That's the West where blade's gonna get him because he's stronger and. His, uh, like he has um, mastery in like multiple martial arts. Or Simon, I'm pretty sure Simon was like a barbarian or something. Like, hey, mm. so did you guys like, hear? Listen, did you? I got dropped. Did you guys hear anything I just said? Uh, you got cut off like halfway in. Go ahead. Uh, my apologies. Um, yeah. Basically, basically, what I said was that I want to go with Blade. Blade's my boy, but his weapons are. He has a lot of gadgets and weapons, but they're pretty much. Um, based solely on fighting vampires and they're not going to work on simon belmont and i think ultimately what it all comes down to is the level of enemies that simon belmont has fought he's defeated dracula twice uh who's kind of god tier level in that world and i don't know if that's something that blade um can mimic um i think this is probably one of the best fights in this um, and I really, really want to go with Blade, but I think reluctantly I'm going to have to go with Simon Belmont just because of the level of villains that he's defeated. Well, one thing I was saying before uh, you came back is the fact that if their weapons are made for vampires and they don't really work on each other, then if it came down to a fist fight, Blade would probably beat Simon Belmont's ass. Like, if it came down to just a fist fight. You know, like, and, and that, and that, and that's still, he has the advantage in strength and speed. You know, all, you know, he has the, uh, also, he has a healing factor, which not, is not going to be negated by the, uh, by his whip because the whip works on vampires, but that stuff doesn't work on Blade. So, you know, like, he can actually last longer because Simon mm. Belmont, as much as a uh, powerhouse as he is, he is still very much human. Like, you know, he's very much human. He could still very like, much a die. His, a lot of his weapons are purely based on killing vampires as well, isn't it? Exactly. So, you know, if it's a stalemate on the weapons. And, and the thing is, samurai swords can be used also on humans as well as vampires. The whip also is powerful. But if it's well, if it doesn't affect him, whip, then... The whip will hurt. Whip, the whip will hurt. It, it has like a spike. It has like spikes and shit on it. it yeah. It kill a human with it if you want it to. You but know, the thing is, but Blade, holy. but Blade's got that, you know, he's got that regenerative ability. I mean, he fought Wolverine, you know, like, and they, yeah. and, the, and they both walked away unscathed because he has, he's like, he went after Ghost Rider. Like, yeah. Ghost Rider's pretty damn weird. And Ghost he, Rider, would, Ghost Rider, Rider Ghost Rider would probably get both of these, but although I don't think Blade won that, but I, you know what, I'm, you know what, I'm going to go with Blade. You know, I think you've convinced me, bro. I really think that that kind of changed my mind. I was basing mine solely on the fact that Belmont has beaten villains that the likes of Blade has not beaten. But I forgot about the whole Wolverine and Ghost Rider thing. Um, and if they both negate because of their vampire, you know, their vampire killing abilities, and it was hand to hand, I think I have to give that to Blade as well. Mm. I think, man, mm. I think I might have to switch my my pick to Blade too. Man, you Sleepy, s- convinced me. Sleepy convinced me. Sleepy convinced me. You say, man, yeah. Well, I already said, uh, you know, so I, th- I think Simon would take it in the end. Oh. All right, then. I guess it'll have to go with Blade is the victor of this one. A surprise one, because I kind of thought Simon was going to win it, too. But after thinking about it, like, you know, th- there's there's a lot of advantages there. But let's go ahead and get to our last matchup of the night. And that is Kratos versus Thor. MCU Thor, not comic Thor. Comic. Well, I think that is important for us to, to verify. It. Yeah, and young Kratos. Not no. young, you're right. Young Kratos from the first three games 
Mm. versus Thor from the MCU, not from the comics. Yeah, not from the comics. And uh, basically, I don't really think these people need an introduction, but I'll go ahead and give a quick one. Uh, basically, Kratos is a Spartan general who saw much fame, but one day found an enemy he could not defeat. And on that day, he cried out to Ares, and Ares granted him the power of the ghost of Sparta, making him a killing machine. But he killed far too much, killing his own family. And in his grief, he went to go find a way to kill the god who set him up, making him the god of war. The uh, next person we have is the son of Odin and the crown prince of Asgard, uh, Thor, Odin's son. He is uh, basically a prince who drenched himself in war and proving himself gave, was given the hammer Milnir, a hammer forged in the heart of a dying star. And from then became the god of thunder, Thor, the Norse, beat, the Norse uh, god of beating ass. So, <laughs> and so that is our two, um, our two combatants, John. Why don't you go ahead and give a quick skim of the powers? All right. So, tail of the tape, both Kratos and Thor are each six foot six. Mm. Didn't realize they were so huge. They're both six foot six. Kratos weighs 285 pounds, while Thor weighs 600 and 40 pounds uh, which is crazy um as far as as far as crazy how much goes, how much did you say thor weighed i'm sorry you, you cut out on my, on my end all of her was 640 pounds damn, damn. all right holy shit <laughs> it's a hefty uh, man. So as, far, as, as far as kratos goes he has infinite strength his limit is unknown but he has lifted a planet-sized sword Kratos was able to resist the attack of Kronos and even pushed his hands back. That means he applied approximately the force of over 165 million tons. Damn. Uh, he is incredibly durable. He is a god um, or a demigod. He comes with superpowers. Kratos, being the god of war, obviously he gets powers such as quasi and vulnerability, enhanced strength, combat skills. But he's the son of none other than the king of gods, Zeus himself. Aside from Hercules-like qualities, Kratos has a few more tricks up his sleeve. Um, over the course of the series, he obtains a variety of godly weapons and artifacts uh, that enable him to use his powers. Uh, you may not have suspected. From animal control to wielding lightning, there seems to be almost no limit to what Kratos can do. Um, it's really kind of ridiculous. Um, uh some of all the things that he's able to do. Um, you may not initially know this, but he's actually a shapeshifter. What? Um, he's a, yeah, he was able to change his shape in at least one of the God of War games. In the opening cinematic of the second installment of the series, Kratos defends the city of Sparta and transforms until his uh, oh. until he's several times. Several times his normal size. That's when he was well, an actual he, god. That's, that's when he was actually a god. Actually, yeah, god. he, was, not he like, may not. He, he lost not that ability. An animal or whatever, but he's still <clears throat> shape shifting. Well, that's only because yeah. he was a god. He doesn't have that ability anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give him that. If, he, if it's God Kratos, then then yeah. you might as well, don't put him see Thor in this one. <laughs> like, <laughs> but <again, laughs> <regular> Thor. <laughs> well, he's, he's he's also a demigod. Um, but yet he's able to accomplish many godly, godly things like resurrection. Mm. Um, he's died multiple times and been brought back. He fought, it, fought his way back. <laughs> brought himself back. <laughs> he has died and fought himself himself out of hell <laughs> multiple times, three times. And if you know anything about Greek mythology and the stories of Orpheus um, and other people who try to get out of an underworld, you know it's hard to do and almost impossible. Mm. Um, he also has a power, um, you would think this would be kind of unique to like Hades or, or Thanatos, but he's, he has necrokinesis, so he can summon the deceased. Uh, when he uses the claws of Hades, he can channel his necrokinesis, kinesis, um, uh, to call Cerebus Mongrel to his side and also use the blades of exile to summon fallen Spartan warriors. Mm. Um, he has instinctive knowledge of godly weapons. So, you know, that's, you know, I'm sure he couldn't pick up uh, Mornor, but he could probably pick up uh, Stormbreaker. 
Mm. Uh, he has shadow. <laughs> manip- he has shadow uh, manipulation. Um. Um. Uh, where you know he can he can kind of change, manipulate his shadow essentially, mm. so he can kind of fool his fool his people, and he can also manipulate light. Mm. So in Chains of Olympus, we get to see him do this. Um, he doesn't need a weapon to do it either. In this case, he unlocks the ability after obtaining the primordial fire, which powers up his sun shield. Mm. Um, and he also has electrokinesis. So with him being the son of Zeus, um, he's, he's able to summon the power of lightning uh, and do ele- and unleash, unleash powerful electrical attacks. Um, he also has duplication. Um, so he needs an artifact to do this, but uh, the O Stone of Orcos, but he's also able to uh, solve puzzles and uh, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. He has animal manipulation. It sounds like a kind of power that he wouldn't have, but um, he does obtain it in a comic book rendition of Kratos. So he can command animals uh, through one of his, his god life powers. Um, w- one of the other things that he was able to do in God of War Two is fly. Uh, after after Sticks, after he defeated Sticks, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and I will say again, he has fought himself out of hell multiple times. Uh, so so mo- moving on to Thor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kratos is just ridiculous, bro. Yeah. But mo- mo- moving on to Thor, uh, he is the god of thunder. He's also the Asgardian god of strength. Uh, as such, he is physically the strongest of the Asgardian gods, and he is said to be able to lift over 100 tons. Mm, damn. Um, although m- more sources have classified his strength as well above 100 tons, mm. uh, according to his power grip. His durability is off the charts. Uh, he's been immune to Ghost Rider's Hellfire. He's sitting in the, he is set in the core of a dying sun. He's resisted being frozen. He's had been attacked by celestials. He's been attacked um, equal to that of exploding suns. He also has superhuman strength, speed, endurance, and resistance to injury. Um, he also has his hammer, Mono, which grants uh, mastery over the elements of thunder and lightning, as well as the ability to fly and open interdimensional gateways. Uh, so he can uh, transport dimensionally, ele- uh, manipulate electricity and flight, uh, manipulated weather. He's one of the strongest heroes in the Marvel universe. Universe, uh, besides his enormous physical strength and being durable enough to survive a blast from the Celestials, he also can manipulate energy uh, that are on par with Silver Surfer. Mm, damn. Right. So I mean, it's really kind of re- uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, his his God Blast has also caused a crack in the armor of the Celestial. Exit, uh, Exitar. I might pronounce that wrong, but it's E X I T A R. And the shock wave that happened when he did that rocked the planet Pangoria to its foundations. Uh, while on Earth, Thor once claimed to withhold his power unless fighting someone with similar strength and durability. When facing both the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, the Hulk has even stated that Thor with Molnar is the only one among them that he considers a threat. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mike, all right. Well, go ahead, Matt. You give your first one. All right. So, wait. Let me clarify something. Is this MCU Thor? Because, that, like, half the shit you just said um, does not apply to MCU Thor at all. <laughs> like, that's comic book Thor. I don't think it's fair. I think you should change it uh, just to regular comic book Thor. Because if you're putting MCU Thor in there, like, you I just don't even have to say anything. Well, it's if you – if you're doing com, if you're gonna put do comic book Thor, you gotta cut him off before. You gotta cut him off to old school Thor. He can't be new school Thor. New school Thor killed yeah. Galactus. That's crazy. You know that. Yeah, like, but that's lore. That would be more of a suit fight against against Kratos. If someone asked me if Kratos could beat Galactus, I would say yes. I uh, no. I don't think I don't think Kratos could do it. No. Maybe he could. I don't know. No. I don't know. It would be a ridiculous thing to see. Because the I thing mean, is, there's got Titan. He bought something about the size of Galactus before. So. I'm not, I'm not going to labor the point too long because we don't have long. But in the galactic scale, Zeus would be a Sky Father, which is below Galactus. You know, Galactus is above Celestials. 
which are above yeah. gods. You know, like he's ridiculous. He's he's. We're talking about universal forces now. You know, like it's it's it's. I I you know I don't think Kratos would stand a chance against Galactus. He'd literally just eat the planet he's on. But um, as far as Thor, if you cut him off to old school Thor, I don't know, man. It's still close. Yeah, it's but go ahead. Fair of a fight. But the you, MCU Thor. I love the MCU, and I love. But that no, like that's. If 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 it's if you're sticking to MCU Thor, then Kratos would rip him in half and suck up his green health orb. Like it, it would be, it would be, it wouldn't even be a fair well, fight. Go, well, go ahead. What do you think wins? Just Thor. You know who do you think wins? Regular Thor. That's okay. So that's a tough one. I mean, it, it would be there would be a hell of a fight. But I mean, I, I'm, honestly, I have to give it to Kratos, man. He he's fought in enemies he shouldn't you know wouldn't think he'd be able to kill multiple times before. He is known as a god killer. Like that's his like he's the god killer. Like he killed he killed all the gods in his universe. Uh until like nothing was left, and then somehow found his way to another pantheon and started killing them. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Like mm. if you're cutting it off to old school Thor, it would be a tough fight, but I think in the end, Kratos would get it. It's saying now what I think really is that Thor gets it because Check it, like, like old school Thor, like you know, like still, like could straight up take a star to the chest. And I know that, uh, you know, Kratos is a god killer, but I think that in even in the game, it's gonna stop at Thor, because Thor is ridiculous. If you were to take the original um, stories of Thor that aren't even in the comic, but the original legends of Thor from the original Nordic lore. He's even more crazy. He used to break stars, bruh. He's ridiculous. Like, the man is like, like, he's, he's a planet buster. That's how, like, ridiculous Thor is. And I just don't think Kratos can can go that far like i i think he's good he's strong he'll give him a hell of a fight but i think at the end of the day thor is a mightier it thor is a mightier being hmm. yeah well, i don't know i, I had that's a good I point will, i will have to agree with matt in this one uh i think that that thor will not only kill thor but he will then fuck natalie portman <laughs> <laughs> and I think he would do the same thing to Galactus. <laughs> and... <laughs> Natalie, no! no. <laughs> <laughs> shoot himself into outer space, climb up Galactus, cut off his privates, and do everything else with him. Um, well, it would be an I'm entire a, game. I mean, it would be an entire game with them climbing I bias here, but I am going to take Kratos over any god that exists. But the, the the good thing that happens here is that we're going to actually get to see this fight. Maybe not MCU Thor. It's going to be more of the Nordic Thor. Uh, but we will see this fight in the upcoming God of War game. So I have a feeling I, Kratos is going to win it. So. I, I have a feeling that Kratos is going to die in the second God of War game. And the third God of War game is going to be Atreus' game. Yeah, well, yeah, Loki. Yeah, well, you know, John hasn't, hasn't be. I already spoiled that for well, him, but you yeah. already ruined it for him. I know, I know, but like you know, John uh, has it so well, like the game has been out for so long. I just, I just, I think there's a there's a there's a threshold of spoiler territory. And once it's the game's true. Been out for but years, yeah, like, but since you should played it. <laughs> but since his son's name is Loki, I guarantee you. That the uh, last game is going to be uh, Loki, and that, that the second game that. he's going to die by Thor's hand. Thor beats Kratos in the second. I don't know, game. man. I think if anything, I kind of agree with you. I think it's going to be like Kratos and Thor kill each other, and now, it's going to be a part of like Ragnarok. Like, no, I instead think of, uh, instead of instead oh, of Fethnir killing Thor, like in the actual story, mm -hmm. Kratos is going to kill Fethnir, then he's going to kill. Thor, but they, they kill each other, like, and then it's going to be left like at the end, tail end of Ragnarok, and you're going to play as a. Uh, you. you know, I don't know, and, man. Like, I don't know, man. I think he's going to straight up. Him, I think he's going to straight up beat him because Thor is stronger than Zeus, bro. Like, Zeus is a bitch compared to Thor. Like, you know, like he he would come over there and just bitch walk Zeus. Like, like, like that's all I'm saying. He's he he's and then plus Kratos is not in his former condition. As much of a god as he is in his older form, he is weaker than his younger form. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know. As far as, we'll as, far as the upcoming game, yeah. Yeah, you I mean, know. I think, I, I think this is going to be an interesting one. I, you know, one that I want to do in a future versus battle that Matthew actually brought up when we listed these characters is a Kratos versus Hulk. I think that oh, would that, be yeah, that would be a great one. That would be nice. Um, but I think, you know, as powerful and as awesome as Thor is, I'm sorry, bro, but like that's that's Kratos' MO is to kill God. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think that they're gonna make Kratos lose in his game. I just don't think they will. He'll, okay. he'll die he'll he'll die after it'll be a situation where he kills Thor and then he's still alive and he's walking but he's injured. And then he dies and goes to the underworld and just decides not to fight out. No, I I I disagree. I disagree. I believe narratively, because the thing is, narratively, in God of War, the new one, fourth, Kratos' story is over. His arc is over. Like, he has no more arc after this game, after the game you're going to play, John. At the end of it, his arc is over. So, narratively, him being the father and the old person and whose arc is done, him as the mentor character, he's going to die, giving Atreus the uh the what's it called giving loki the motivation to take on uh the uh you know the asgard so like that's and, I, well I, I i can agree that maybe he'll lose in his upcoming game as old as old kratos mm-hmm. but in this particular situation that we're talking about we ain't talking about old kratos even maybe, young, maybe, even young maybe kratos thor, maybe thor will kill old kratos maybe <sighs> i don't even see that happening but old kratos Young Kratos, like I said, man, he, or young Kratos, he's going, he's going to kill Thor and, and have sex with his wife. This is going to happen. Yeah, I said he's going to kill Thor, and he, he would kill Thor, and then bitch slap Mjolnir until it let him pick him up. He'd be like, no, 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 I'm your master, and he'd be like, okay, okay, shit. No, bro, he, he's, he's going to because he's going to try to kill him with his own weapon like he always does, and he's going to find bro, himself getting his ass. Yeah, he would smash. His he's going to find. He's going to find the god killing ends at Thor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You ever read the? We'll go- see. You we'll ever read? See. I'm excited about. It. Have you all ever read the God Butcher, Thor the God and the God Butcher? No, you, no. You ever read it? That's a good one. It has Gore the, and he was basically going around killing gods at a much higher rate than Kratos ever did. But then again, they made him ridiculous. He's a comic villain. But it's a nice comic. Read it if you ever want to read a nice story, a Thor story. Read Thor and the God Butcher. I, I did read the one. He single handedly defeated Apocalypse, which it took like all the X Men multiple times. Yeah, you and know. He just like it's like he lost the first fight and then came back and just bitch slapped him. Yeah. Well, we can talk. We can talk about the comics forever though. But um... yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's one of over a little bit. We had we had the same kind of conversation in the previous versus battle that we did. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt that Thor can kill Kratos, mm-hmm. but he's not going to be able to keep him dead. You know, that's kind of. <laughs> That's kind of like the way that I look at it. Is that Kratos, or like their first encounter? Thor might get the best of them, but then Kratos is going to fight himself back and then be fueled by anger and vengeance, and he's going to keep coming back till he kills him. And then once he kills Thor, Thor is dead. Uh, so that's kind of I don't know. Kind of, you know, I think narr- I think that's an intangible that you can't really. Like, I think narratively, Kratos is uh is is amped to die there because he's already done. He's done. His arc is complete. He's already had his redemption arc, and um, like you know, there's nothing more for him to do than die for the plot. So I'm mean, just think I narratively, I'm pretty sure he was, but yeah, definitely. You all, you know, you put two Kratos against one Thor, so Kratos will win this one. So, um, well, it's like Austin said, though. I mean, that's also an option. Yeah. They might fight to a stalemate, but I don't see Kratos fighting anyone to a stalemate. Yeah, that's and then plus Thor come like. Thor has god mechanics, so if he dies, he just comes back in three days. Uh, what in the game? What, what are you talking about? In the comics, he, if he if Thor dies, he uh, comes he co- comes back in three days because he has god mechanics. I thought we were talking about the next God of War games. It's not no, no, no. Comic book story, but no, it's no. Be, I mean, like, so is that is that god mechanics? Is that what like is that how Jesus came back? Like, yeah, how, like god mechanics. When you're a god, you don't die. <laughs> You don't die when you're a god in the you comics. You just come back in three days. Right? Yeah, you just come back. <laughs> you just come back. Now, maybe maybe be more or less than three days, but you just come back. You don't actually die, you know, like, because you're a god. And, like, you have uh, a semblance like, of immortality. Yeah, until Ragnarok. They can't die until Ragnarok. That's when they're supposed to die. 
which Kratos brings. Mm. Well, actually, it's Loki. That's what's going to happen in the game. Yeah, that's what's it's, it's, it's actually Loki. Kratos has just raised him. I'm, I'm talking about in the game. Yeah, that's what I'm in, saying. In, in this fight. In the game, that's it what, will be Loki because that's the, the thing. I'm telling I, I agree, I agree with I agree with Sleepy on that one. It's going like, to be I a transition. going to die in the next game, but you're, you're going to play as Kratos in the next game. Yeah. It's going to be the bat- boss battle. It's going to be Thor, and you're going to kill Thor. I don't think Thor is just going to kill you and he leaves. They're gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna kill each other, and then I think, he's gonna hand the, the fuck his weapons off to Atreyu, and then it's gonna take place afterwards, and right. Atreyu is gonna be trying to kill Odin. That's let me what I think let me say this real fast because we don't have a lot of time. I gotta go to sleep for the next day, but check it. This is the story. Like when Loki is found by Odin, he kills Fafnir, uh, not Fafnir, y- um, not Fafnir, uh, Ymir. What's his name? You know the the ice giant guy, right? The, yeah, the, uh, the king of yeah. Ymir, he kings the king of the ice giants. Well, in this story, I damn it, I can't say it because John hasn't played it. Fuck. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, well, look, he basically. You guys are all assuming this could be a very much a Hercules Zeus situation, I'm so, and he might he, he might fight Thor before he goes on to fight Odin. No, no. Do, what they're doing is they're doing an, a, a a a rendition of the story, their own rendition, but they're still doing the story of Ragnarok and. Loki's father is killed by Odin, and then o- and then Loki is adopted by Odin. Oh, yeah. So I'm, well, and this, I'm, this, I'm it's, it's, it's Kratos enters and he kind of subverts that story. So instead of true, being Odin, but I bet it, Kratos raises Loki. Yeah, true. That's why Kratos will die. Kratos is not supposed to be in that world. But he, you, that's that's what's interesting about it. It's going to change things. It's not going to be what you expect. True, because but, there's a new player on the field. True, you but they're I mean? they're like, trying to transition the story from Kratos to Loki because Loki is the new god of you know uh, is the is going to be the new killer of gods. Is Kratos' yeah, son? I, no, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just saying narratively. I I just feel most likely it'll work out that way. But like you know, I don't want it to happen. Oh uh, no, so, I don't. Go ahead. So, so who, who, what's the tally here? I'm going with Kratos. No, we, Kratos won. Kratos won. I'm just, Kratos we're, won. Yeah, we're yeah. just talking about you know theory crafting about. We went off on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking. About, <laughs> Kratos won. Sorry, he, yeah, he won. Yeah. Yeah, Kratos wins. Yeah. And he's gonna go. Get, he's gonna go into that hot tub with all the the naked chicks and get his health back. You know, I was, and honestly, I was honestly shocked that we had two unanimous decisions here in this versus battle. I, I'm. I'm well, yeah. it wasn't yeah. unanimous. And Godzilla. No, we had Indiana Jones and Godzilla both unanimous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's kind of, you know, they're, they're the favorites. And, you know, honestly, for a good reason. I think the Thor and the uh, the Kratos thing could be debated a lot more because they're a lot closer and they're both gods. You know, but, you know. I can't I can't wait to see it in the new game. Yeah. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, I have a PS4, but I'm not going to have a PS5. So if it comes out exclusively to PS5, it's going to be. When's it, when does it, it come will, out? It will. I, it's delayed. <laughs> it's delayed, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be just straight up PS5. But John, play God. You get play God of War, so I can talk about story beats. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, about to start. I'm about to put my PlayStation. Yeah. My PlayStation. Because if you saw like the story beats in God of War, you would start to understand what I'm saying a little more. Well, I tell you guys, what. this has been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Real quick, for sure, it's always fun. Though, I, def- I definitely want to um, uh, go ahead and throw this out there. Uh, we have a lot of big things on the horizon, guys. Um, I need you guys to continuously check in with us. Um, first off, this Friday, uh, don't miss our session number three of our Two Death Dungeons and the Dragon campaign. Uh, it's it's going to be lit. You guys definitely want to check that out. Uh, more importantly, on the 28th, we definitely have our next installment of the 2 Def Online Tournament Series, and it will be Rocket League. So uh, all of our followers, everybody that's listening in, um, if you play Rocket League, grab your partner and come join this tournament. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be $100 for first place, $50 for second place, and if you get third place, you will get your money back. So um, we're really we're really wanting a good turnout for this tournament. And, uh, you know, shout out to Wayne and our other sponsors for help making this happen. Um, and we want you guys to show up and show up big. Um, and let's get this tournament cracking, man. 
For real, for real. Please show up and show out, man. I love these tournaments, and I'd like to see them grow. So, um, is there anything else we were, uh, had on the uh, docket for uh, you? Well, I will say, uh, all of you guys listening that maybe uh, came in late, or if you're watching it after the fact, after it's already been posted and it's not live, please do still comment on this video and let us know what you think. Uh, let us know where we got it wrong. Let us know where you disagree with us. Let us know when you agree with us, because... Um, you know, these that's what makes this fun is the is the debate and the banter. So let us know what you think. Are we idiots or did we get it right? Yeah, you know, I mean or, or maybe you're an idiot. Who knows? Like, no, I, I might be. Well no, I'm not you're talking a, about you. I'm talking the only one that's not an idiot. Like I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the obligatory you. Oh yeah. <laughs> the the one. We will call them one. The ones. Uh, when, one, <laughs> when one is an idiot, one does not know. <laughs> it's true. And it seems a lot more blissful. Of course, it's not blissful for anyone else. Anyways. Uh, now, well, definitely thank you, thank you guys for all coming out and watching this video. We had a lot of engagement and a lot of views on this, on this uh, podcast. Uh, and that's what we're wanting. We want more engagement, more views, and we appreciate everything, guys. So thank you. All right. Well, that that being said, we'd like to thank everybody who came out and participated, and all those who just watched as well. Please um, hit us up on social media such as Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, and all those good ones that you all know and love. Um, we uh, love doing this, and we want the community to grow, and we want you all to grow with us. Hey, Mama. Thank, thank, thank you thank you thank you for showing up and you know that's my mom in the uh chat anyways thank hey, you Miss candace uh, hey, Mr. Uh, i really appreciate you coming out and listening to all these videos of ours i know you were there for the dungeons and dragons and uh i appreciate your support candace you were awesome yeah i really did thanks mama for you know showing uh, hold up hold up hold up, hold up. All, uh, please, hold up shout out to olivia inspirations oh yeah uh, if any yeah if anybody needs any custom-made uh clothes uh, there is none better than the one and the only Miss Santiago. So make sure that you guys go check out Olivia Inspiration. Yeah, get those custom made masks and all sorts of other things for uh, your uh, little ones to wear for um, your school whenever it opens back up. Um, what I was saying, though, is uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. And also thank my mother and um, thank all of you guys and thank john and thank matt and just you know really thank everybody it's, it's a it's a it's an awesome time so with that being said <laughs>